It's a real pleasure to have our, our own Paul Sanchegrin. Paul did his PhD uh, at uh, Michigan State University and uh, did a postdoc overseas in Europe, came back, spent some time at uh, Schrodinger for a while, and then uh, came to us here at SB Grid, where uh, Paul's been leading our uh, computational uh, docking and uh, efforts here in the group. So today, Paul's going to talk about a basic primer for docking and similarity searching against the ICCB Longwood databases on our uh, SB Grid Goldfinger cluster. Uh, thank you, Jason, for the introduction. Um, as Jason said, my name is Paul. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. So this is uh, pretty basic stuff. Um, whoops. Got it. Um, if you have any problems with audio or video or whatnot, uh, just message us and uh, we'll uh, double check and see what's going on. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. I don't think this will take the whole half hour that it's supposed to take. Um, we'll see. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, there we go. Systems check. Um, it's fine on our end. We're recording. Um, i got to find a page. Well, we'll just do this way, I guess. There we go. Uh, let me see if I can move a couple. Oops. Sorry about that. So some of you know, uh, may know that uh, SB Grid has a cluster, um, or we call it our Goldfinger cluster. It's located here at SB Grid at uh, Harvard Medical School. It's a 64-core Xenon E5520. There's 16-plus uh, megabytes of node. It depends on the nodes, but they have at least 16 megabytes um, of memory. Um, so it's a reasonable cluster. Um, it's available to all SB Grid members. So if your lab is a, a member of the SB Grid Consortium, um, you can use it. Um, we're going to talk today. I'll talk mostly about the sort of using it for shorting our stuff today, which uh, Jason did a primer in back in, I think it was November. So if you're interested in more information about uh, that, you can uh, look back to the archive and there should be a recording of his webinar. Um, it's also, you can also be used for basically any uh, SP Grid software that you have that can run on the cluster. Um, so if you would like access, you can either fill out our web form or you can email uh, bugs at sbgrid.org um, with your name and lab affiliation and um, ask for uh, access to the cluster. It would be useful for us, too, if you provide a little bit of information about what you might be doing um, and whatnot, what programs you might be running just uh, for our own information. Uh, once we've given you access, there's a script in – I can't see my whole slide. Oops, sorry about that. I've got to slide some of these other windows out of the way so I can – There we go. I can just about see it there. Um, there's a, we have a script and program share bin called SB Grid Cluster Setup. This is primarily useful for running Schrodinger software. It'll set up your keys, SSH access, and whatnot so that you can do the passwordless um, SSH. And this is required for Schrodinger to basically move data back and forth and whatnot. Once this is all set up and working, you can, um, and there's ways to test it within Schrodinger, it's actually quite nice because you can submit uh, Schrodinger jobs directly from your workstation, either from within Maestro or from the command line using the, the minus host option, and it'll send these to our cluster and do your job control and monitoring and everything and, and then bring it all back. It's, it's, it's actually quite nice to use it. I use it pretty regularly for various tasks. Uh, come on. Oh, I want to go down. Um, oh. There we go. We got it. Um, so today we're going to be talking mostly about the data set from ICCB Longwood. This is a um, HMS located high throughput screening facility. Um, it's actually located about five floors above us. Uh, they have small molecule libraries, SI, siRNA and miRNA mimic libraries. Um, it's a pretty common resource that people around um, our area use. Um, so. I'm going to talk about their compound sets and what we did to prepare them and how do you use them. That's sort of the whole point of the talk. So they have so our set that we've obtained from them is about 304,000 compounds. We converted those to Maestro format just because it makes some later things easier. Um, you can actually do lig prep directly with SD files, and we did that for uh, uh, some other data sets. They're split into 15,000 compound slices. Um, so this is what I'll call slices through the, uh, through the talk. I'll refer to this term. Quite a, not quite a bit, but I'll refer to this term, this term as well. This basically makes things easier to run. You can run it in chunks. If one chunk happens to die, um, you don't have to run all 300,000 compounds. They were lig prep using a 
basically the standard recommended procedure from Schrodinger uh, using the OPLS 2005 uh, force field. We generated states, pH 7 plus or minus 2. We desalted and tautomerized them. The only non-default thing we really did is we added the metal binding states, and this is useful. Um, you can turn this on in scoring and glide. Um, it doesn't really do anything to the, to the lig prep itself other than sort of uh, make this little flag. In addition to this 304,000 compounds uh, that we obtained from them, which is their complete set, they also provided us some um, specialized subsets. I think most of these are about 250, 300 compounds somewhere in the neighborhood. Um, you can see them listed there for GPCRs, iron cores, and some other sets. Um, if, you have more, if you have more questions about the, the, very, the details of what their sets actually in, um, entail, you can either contact us or contact them, and they should be able to provide you that information. So using on Goldfinger, um, it's not quite as clean as we would like at the moment, which we, we may improve that in the future. Um, the data sets are located, you can see the link there, programs, local databases, ICCV link prep complete, and then there's a date. Um, this is also linked to the latest, so the latest one that we have will always be in latest, and then the dates um, will vary. So right now we have the 2012 December 20th set. Um, so in this, in this directory, so this is actually 2012, 12, 20. Uh, they're named as, you can see the name here, ICCB, so on, complete, and then a slice number one, two, up to, um, I think there's 16 of them, 15 of them. Um, that LP for lig prep, and they're as uh, made GZ files. For this particular set, there's also a complete set if you'd like to use that instead. So this is, each of these slices all merged into together, so it's 300,000 compounds. Um, that can be useful if you want to run, um, makes things a little easier. This set's small enough that we can sort of do that. So if you'd like to run the whole set all at once, um, you don't have to put stuff back together at the end. So the way to actually do this is you can, on your workstation, at, in your local office, wherever you're working, you can take Maestro, open it up and do all the preparation just like you normally would, prepare your grid files and all that um, whatnot. Once you have a grid file ready to go, you can um, set up your docking using really any structure file as a ligand file, because um, we're just going to use it as a placeholder at the moment. Once you've got all your parameters set up, you can then write the input file using write. So when you go to run a, a glide job, there's a button at the bottom that says write. And rather than actually starting the job, what this will do is write an input file. Now comes the sort of um, somewhat inelegant part. Um, you could basically take this file that you've just written, whatever you want to call it, and then edit the file so you change the ligand file field, which there's an um, entry in that file, to basically this whole chunk here. Um, and then you can either use all, I think the, I don't remember if I named it, but I think it's all.lp.maegz for the complete merged set or each slice. So if you want to run this in slices and there's 16 slices, you have 16 of these files with a different number here in each of the slices. Then what you can do is you can copy the grid file and then these input files um, to Goldfinger via SCP, put them in some convenient location wherever you want to run. Um, that really doesn't matter so much for us. Um, but one key here is that you don't have to copy the ligand files because they're obviously already on the cluster. Once all your files are on the cluster, you can start the job uh, on Goldfinger. So again, you have to be SSH, so you SSH into Goldfinger. And you can run the, the job using glide minus host sbgrid-cluster and then the input file. Um, and these will run on cluster, they'll run in the queuing system automatically, and they'll be all set to go. And then you can monitor the jobs via job control, but this has to be run on Goldfinger. So you can uh, just do, there's a job control command line, um, just job control minus list all or minus list running or whatnot. You can look uh, at the documentation for job control. Um, the Schrodinger documentation has all, all kinds of good information about how to run job control from the command line, or you can do job control minus help. Once it's complete, the results can then be copied back via SCP. Um, so depending on how you run, this will either be a maestro f or a, a may file or a pose your file or um, whatever output that you have. Um, oops, let me go back. Um, yeah, so that's about it for running sort of the docking on Goldfinger. Um, again, it's pretty straightforward. It's a little inelegant because of the, the, the copying back and forth um, that we may have a procedure to help with that in a little bit. Um, we're working on that. The other thing we do that some people might be interested in is we generated for the same ICCB data set, we generated um, some binary fingerprints using Canvas. 
Um, in this case, we only generated the mole print 2D fingerprints, um, which seemed to work best for many general purposes. Um, there's actually a publication that I should have included here, but uh, if you look on the Schrodinger website, they have a publication that talks about fingerprint performance, um, and this is the one that they suggest use. So that's what we've been using, and that's the one that we've prepared. Similar to where the, the LigPrep databases are, uh, they're in Programs Local, Databases, ICCB-Canvas, and then the date. Um, in this case, the complete and the subsets are in the same location because fingerprint files are quite small, unlike the um, gigabytes of data that we get for league prep, the fingerprint files are, uh, I think, a few hundred. I'm not even sure if they're a few hundred meg. I think they're a few tens of megs. These files can be used directly with Canvas, uh, so the FP matrix, FP hist, and all their, their commands and whatnot um, from the command line. The nice thing about these files is um, you could uh, obtain them yourself and copy them over since they're so small. They're, they're, they're pretty easy to do that. Um, so that's about all I have. Um, basically how you use them. Um, if you'd like to obtain the databases themselves, um, we're working on a mechanism to sort of, we're, we're still going back and forth whether you'll be able to either download these independently or they'll be integrated into, um, somehow integrated into the uh, programs tree. Um, that's still to, 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 be, to uh, be determined. And what I'll do is once we figure out a way to do that, it'll go out to the SP Grid mailing list in general. Um, and if it's not time for a recent newsletter, um, I'll make sure to send it to the participants on this list if we have your emails. If you'd like to obtain these databases now and use them um, locally, again, they're already on the cluster. You can use them on the cluster, no problem. Uh, you can send an email to us at bugs at, at sbgrid.org, um, and we'll uh, see what we can do and um, organize it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, though it's sort of somewhat beyond the scope of this talk, um, is that many of you may be interested in the Zinc databases, which is a database of purchasable, a freely available database of purchasable compounds. We're working on having that as well. There's still, we're still sort of uh, tweaking out the, the, the legal issues, uh, the licensing issues, and whether we can provide it or not. Um, hopefully that should be coming down the pike in, uh, soon. So again, that's all I have. Um, if you have any questions, you can text us, um, or not text us, but message us, I guess, in the, in the, the WebEx. Um, or again, you can always contact bugs at sbgrid.org if you have questions on using this stuff, and we'll uh, get back to you. I have one question to mm -hmm. get up, Paul. How many hours of computational time do you, would you say are uh, involved in your preparation of the ICCB databases? As far as the user is concerned, how, how what sort of lead do they, they get by starting with pre, can, pre? Um So I think the ICCB, so I think each slice of the ICCB was about, I want to say each slice was about 30 to 40 hours. Um, though I might be off, I might be thinking of a different data set that we prepped and it might only be 10 to 15, but even, so it, it's probably, let's say 20 hours per slice. So 20 hours on the single CPU times the, I think the 16 slices, so it's about 320 hours of computation. Um, that's already been done for you, basically. Um, so it should, it, it, I mean, so in, in previous times when I've done docking, we've sort of, it's been nice to have these databases already prepared and then we just have to do it. Um, we can just run our dockings, so. Great. Let's see. And uh, if anyone has questions, feel free to chat them in the chat window. And one other thing uh, that's probably worth mentioning is that because these are all compounds available in the ICCB yeah. screening facility, these are all available for purchase for once that one could obtain these compounds should one desire to, as opposed to some databases which have compounds that are uh, mm -hmm. that are not available. Yes, I believe so. Um, I'm not 100% sure about the ICCB and how much stuff that they have that is maybe special order or whatnot, but they obviously, these are compounds that are actually in their database. So anybody using the ICCB for actually screening, one of the nice things, and we're working on a project to do this now, is that if you do some screening and you get some hits, you can use these databases to sort of, um, or this database to maybe pull out some more hits, maybe do some docking or some fingerprint searching, and then do some sort of uh, well picking or uh, compound picking um, out of their database for additional screening. Um, and once we get the once we get the zinc database squared away, those are all purchasable compounds as well, so you can actually go out and buy those compounds. Um, 
All right, great. Well, if there are no questions, uh, and or if you if you have questions later on, feel free to email uh, us here at SP Grid. Um, and with that, uh, oops. Um, looks like we've got one. So the question is, do we use a gas phase or solution phase of the ligand? Um, so this would be, as far as lig prep is concerned, this would be solution phase. Um, yeah, this would be solution phase. So it's using the standard lig prep uh, procedure. Um, yeah. All right, great. Well, with that, I think we'll wrap it up. And uh, as I said before, if you have questions later on or if you want to if you have a question you want to ask offline, feel free to drop us an email. Uh, and with that, thank you very much. Thank you.